ready for round two? Let's do it. All right, YouTube. All right, poor brothers, ready for round two. We got our brackets here. Bang. Ready to fill them out. I'm just going to get this uh, audio part ready to roll. And then we're going to do that. We're Big Ten champs. I know. It's... I love it. It never gets old. I just want my T-shirt already. I want to sleep in my Big Ten champion T-shirt. And you will be looking for a text from our source, right? I will, yeah. Okay. It is the <clears throat> 200 level, episode 402. Here, I'll tell you what, since you... Uh... <laughs> Sorry, my bad, my bad. We'll call that a full start. YouTube VIP content. Here we go. It is the 200 level, episode 402. We are live from Poor Brothers Craft Tap Room in downtown Champaign, Illinois, Big Ten Tournament Champs. Second time in four years. There have been three players, and Isaac, if you could find it from Derek Piper, I believe. Three players in conference tournament history that have averaged over 30 points a game in a conference tournament. They are Kevin Durant, Doug McDermott, sharpshooter, Terrence Shannon Jr. Three players in NCAA conference tournament history have ever averaged 30 points plus per game. Illinois wins three games in three days against a red-hot Ohio State team, a red-hot Nebraska team, a red-hot Wisconsin team with a few bad halves in there. But then finally today, a pretty complete performance minus the first few minutes of that second half, and they responded very quickly to that. So Isaac, of course there are bigger fish to fry, but this feels really good. Really, really good. Yeah, I just wanna put one of these t-shirts on I'm looking at. It's perfect timing because my 2021 t-shirt is getting a little worn out a little ratty it's, it's got some it's got some history behind it i'm trying to find this stat okay so it's from illini stats and notes the three players to average 30 plus points in the conference tournament since 1996 kevin durant doug mcdermott and terrence shannon so wow. again i know we were having this we fans were asking this last night in the illini inquire podcast if shannon makes you the sweet 16 like, where does he place himself in Illini history? Well, pretty far up there, Isaac, yeah. because it, let's be honest, as much as we are big Illini fans, the NCAA tournament history of this program is not, it doesn't match their regular season it's success. Lacking. And, it's lacking. And that's historical. I mean, that goes back to Lou Henson, who made one Elite Eight, one Final Four. Uh, Bill Self would have given you the most consistent opportunities, but he is a Hall of Fame coach. And then you have, of course, uh, Bruce Weber in his first couple of years were fantastic in the NCAA tournament. So Terrence Shannon was one point short of tying the all-time scoring record in the Big Ten tournament. Okay. And it was set by Keegan Murray, but Keegan Murray played one extra game. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, That's I, crazy. We, we have a couple minutes here before the brackets are unveiled, and let's just talk about just how insane, as they show Illinois cutting down the brackets there, how absolutely insane of a three-day stretch that was for Terrence Shannon Jr. He willed you to a victory yesterday. I mean, of course you don't win the Nebraska game without him doing what he did. He kept you in it, and then he helped you close it. But you know what I was really encouraged by today, Isaac? And we were texting with Trevor about this, too. The overall completeness of the performance. Coleman, I thought, played a great game. Yep. Marcus Damask, 26 points. He was back to his old self. We have Dane Danger giving you seven or nine. Nine, nine and six. 4-4 four, four from the field, 1-1 one of one from the line, off the bench, a great game for Dane. You had DGL come off the bench, give you some defensive intensity. He made a layup. Uh, you know, Harmon is still struggling. Luke Goody with some big offensive boards. Yep. I feel like I'm not shouting somebody out. Ty Rogers with his rebounding, insane. I mean, if I Quincy, I think overall a pretty good game from him. Yeah, I mean, Luke, Luke gave you some good rebounds. It felt like really everybody was stepping up, which you – hadn't been getting and it felt like again you had to have uh, you had to have terrence will you yesterday you had to have um quincy had a, a good half second half yesterday it felt like today was the most complete i mean shoot you got like two good minutes from dgl in the first half which i forgot about right he had that bucket even dgl gave you a couple decent minutes there so um it's it this is what you want to see you want to see your fourth fifth sixth seventh best players pulling it together right now. Yes. 
All right, the brackets are about to come out. We do have an inside source. Here's the code word, okay? This is, we're going to give this to 200-level <laughs> listeners. Nothing it's yet. It's a 200-level exclusive. If we get a good draw, Darren Williams. If we get a bad draw, Mark Allstork. All right, so we, we're going to get our inside scoop here in a bit from our inside source. Can't divulge who it is, but Isaac, we're plugged in. We are, slightly. We are plugged in here. Now, um, if I recall, and I'm going off the Champagne Showers bracket contest bracket, we got the South and East on the left side, the Midwest and the West on the right. And the one seeds, this will be where it gets interesting because Iowa State's win yesterday actually makes them a possibility to jump over North Carolina, who lost to North Carolina State. The Big 12, fantastic. Best conference in, in the country, right? Oh, yeah. 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 Versus the ACC, pretty weak conference, all things considered. I think the Big East is a close second, but yes, to the Big 12. All right. As Jacob asked, can we get Memphis or Indy? I will say, Jacob, from what I understand, the three seed that you would hope to get, right, that three seed that you would hope to get would probably not put you in Memphis or Indy. I think according to Jeremy and Derek last night, you were looking more at either Omaha or, or Pittsburgh, maybe Boston. Yeah. But hopefully what a three seed does is keep you from going really far out west. I want to say the matchup they were looking at yesterday had Iowa State as the two seed, had Akron. You would play Akron, right, first game. And then yeah. I think Nevada as the six. Which Nevada as the six. I, mean, I, I have been matchup. encouraged by the six seeds I've seen. The yes. one that I would be a little worried about is Florida. If yeah. they get placed on the sixth line, but by hopefully jumping into that three seed line, which I think you deserve it. Yeah. Um, but you know, listen. All that said, it's still about matchups, right? And if you do get a four, I need to see the other teams around you before I start freaking out and saying, "Well, that's not fair." You honestly don't want. I know Kansas has been Kansas has been going in the wrong direction, but a guy like Kevin McCuller. And they have KJ Adams too, like guys like that that can slow down. Probably Terrence Shannon, like those are the matchups you don't want to see, right? And, and hopefully you played yourself off of that. I yes, mean, Kansas yes. is firmly a four. I think their injuries will be taken into consideration, but yes. their resume probably would not get them above a four. And I don't think they would dip down to a five. They've been a no. solid four for weeks now. And they got whooped in the first round, I think, of their of their tournament. All right, so we might be getting the one seeds here to start. In the East, UConn. No surprise, UConn is the number one seed in the East on these brackets. That's on the bottom left here. And they're just going to go with the East region. So let's see what we got here. The 16 so is, seed. So Brooklyn and Spokane. So this would put us in Spokane for the four. If Yeah, if they kept us at a four. This is going to be Stetson. Sure, that's a cool name, though. Isn't that a type of hat? I think it's a type of cowboy hat. Yeah, they're a, like a horse or something, right? I don't well, know. Stetson, you draw UConn, <laughs> probably the most complete team in the country. Yeah. And the 8-9, maybe a Michigan State will get in here. Let's see. Okay, the 8-9 matchup to face UConn. Maybe Nebraska could get a touch of this, too. Florida Lord, Atlantic. FAU. They were on the bubble. They were. They got an eight seed. So wow. it looks like past success has helped Florida Atlantic. Yeah. If they view Florida Atlantic as an eight, Isaac, that only strengthens our resume. Oh, 100%. And Wisconsin winning. Wow. Oh, Northwestern. Wow. You know what? Northwestern is too banged up for me to pick them. I know. Uh, and if they were healthy, I would maybe pick a, a if, yeah, mild they, upset, but right. I can't do that. FAU has lost to some bad teams. Now, here's so. the thing. You won't be the four here in all likelihood because of how they usually branch out teams right. and conferences. So in Spokane, your five seed is San Diego State. State. So they jumped up, I believe, with a win yesterday. Yeah. Okay. And UAB. UAB they, won, they just won. Did they win their conference tournament? They just won, yeah. Okay. All right, so the four seed in Spokane will be Auburn. Oh, okay. Phew. Wow. I mean, listen, I want no part of Auburn. No, I'm no, glad they are. Yeah, keep them away from you. They're really good. And Yale, who won today. Yale, yeah. At the buzzer. All right, so we got the first part of the East region all filled out. UConn, the one for 16 Stetson. Okay, well, now we're going down to Omaha. Isaac, look out for this. Omaha, Nebraska, this is one of the possibilities for Illinois. The three, the sixth seed is BYU. Metrics do like BYU. Yeah. They're 23 and 10. I don't want to be this three seed. And the 11th seed, 
Did we get anything from our source Duquesne, yet? Duquesne, no. Duquesne. Wow, okay, the A-10 winners. So we got a possibility here, guys. The 3 and 14, the 3 seed is wow. Illinois. We know it's going to be, hey, we know it's going to be Akron. We know it's going to be Akron, right? It's going to be Akron. Book it. John Gross, all the narratives. Let's see it. Do it. Oh, wow. Moorhead State. State. They, um, they almost beat Indiana earlier this year, I think. Uh, yeah, well, Indiana Right, sucks. not saying much. But. <laughs> well, hey, we got Ken Palm wow. queued up, so we'll look at that matchup here. All right, seven seed. Now, this is still part of your path, potentially. I like Washington State as a seven, though, frankly, I would take them as a six over BYU. May not matter depending on who your two seed is, though. So Washington State beneath you in the bracket. Possible Sweet 16 matchup. The 10 seed is Drake. All right. They're a tough team. I, I honestly, Isaac, would be tempted to pick Drake in that matchup. Yeah. I, I wish I'd watched more BYU, and I can't say I've watched Duquesne, but hmm. and that's the two seed you want, I think. Maybe. Iowa State is the two seed, yeah. They, they don't score that many points. They're great defensively, but you've shown that you okay. can play well against good defenses. All right. They and did just whoop Houston yesterday, though. The 15 seed facing off against Iowa State, who once lost as a two seed to a 15 seed, yeah. is South Dakota State. All right, well, as I look here, BYU, go figure, is 16th in Ken Palm, and you are 10th. Okay. Now, here are some strengths for BYU. Their offense is 11th in the country. Their defense, 48th. So they're a pretty balanced team. They lost to Texas Tech in the Big 12 Conference Tournament by 14 points after beating UCF by 14 the day before. Their losses in the last month include Oklahoma on the road, not a great loss, at Oklahoma State, which is a very bad loss. Yeah. At Kansas State, another bad loss. And then Iowa State on the road by five. So that's their, last, their losses in the last month. They've also lost to Houston. No shame in that. Texas Tech beat them twice, it looks like. So they're 16 in the net? 16th in, the, uh, in Ken Palm. Okay. So that, yeah, I'd be interested to hear what they are in the net. Uh, let me, I'm going to check, actually, here. Brad Evans, who is a bracketologist, and he's been doing yeah. his for a while. I wanted to see where he put BYU on his big board. And he did have BYU as a the top five seed. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. Did we get screwed? Well, know. we'll find out. Um, I think Wisconsin firmly played their way into five. I really kind of wanted South Carolina there. Yeah. But I think it will come down to... I mean, you just named off all those losses. Like, if you can't beat a team that lost all those games, like... Then yeah, hey, listen, line it up, and, and it ain't going to be easy. So, okay, no. that's not Darren Williams. That's not Mark Allstork. It wasn't a great draw. It wasn't a bad draw. No, I'm, I'm comfortable with it. Yeah. Do we got anything from our uh, source? Uh, he thought... He, he accidentally read it as McNeese State, so we thought we were playing Okay. Game, well, that's so. good. We didn't get them. Listen, <laughs> yeah. hey, Moorhead State, we got to talk about the first round matchup. There's a game to play. Yeah. All right. So we got a break here before the next bracket. We're going to check out Moorhead State. The jokes write themselves. 111 in Ken Palm. They're 26 and 8 on the season from the Ohio Valley Conference. And in the last month, they did win their conference tournament, of course, to get in. Uh, yeah, they're 111 to Ken Palm. Their offense is 124. Their defense is 120. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I mean, Isaac, this is just one of those, you're three, they're 14. Just right, get it, it shouldn't done. matter. All right. Now, let's uh, see if there's any reaction here in the YouTube feed. Man, it's oh. kind of nice we got it we got early, too. We don't have to sit here and wait for the, the fourth region. Yeah, that's true. Okay, so this is, as Ryan says, BYU is terrifying. I mean, I think the metrics would say they're good, but here's what I would... We can't do this again. We just can't. I'm no, sorry. well, they are not five. Listen, Wisconsin, by comparison, they're 17 in Ken Palm. Could you get a game every bit as tough as Wisconsin? Yeah. Absolutely. Right. And frankly, Wisconsin is basically identical to BYU. They're 13th offensively compared to BYU's 11th. Yeah. Wisconsin 47th defensively, BYU 48. 
they're basically clones of one another. So what does that mean? I think that means you just took the A game from Wisconsin and yeah. you were able to survive it. If you get the A game from BYU, it's going to be tough. I mean, but that, that's a like what you just played and the way you just won the Big Ten tournament. Like that's that's expectable to get to a Sweet 16, right? That's like an expectable round of 32. Now you'd love to get a draw where a team is just way overseeded versus yep. underseeded, but. Um, I think we can objectively say it's not as bad as the... It's not Houston. It's not the Houston <laughs> not situation, bad. and it's not the Loyola Chicago situation. It's not Loyola situation. getting vastly and you don't have to you don't have to play Akron. Like, we don't have to talk about that all week. Yep. So. All right, so here are some metrics here about... Well, should I start with Moorhead State to not overlook? We yeah, I, overlook. Think, I think so. There have been three versus 14 upsets before. Moorhead State with a gaudy record. Okay, so their strength looks, to, well, offense and defense both in the 120s. Three-point shooting percentage, 35%. That's good for 100th best in the country. Yep. And they only give up 31% from three, okay. which is pretty good. I always check out the three-point percentage. Yeah. Um, when you look at some weaknesses for Moorhead State, they have a high turnover percentage rate on offense, and they do not turn the ball over on defense. What's their I'll, offensive efficiency? Like, offensive efficiency, they are um, their effective field goal percentage is fifty four point four, which is good for thirty fifth. Yeah. But they turn the ball over at a high clip. And here's some other things: they do not get to the free throw line very much. If they turn it over a lot, that's good for Terrence Shannon. That's yeah, sure. they're they're two twenty ninth in free throws attempted per game, so they're pretty far down on that. We are back at the uh, selection show, so we're going to look at Moorhead State before they get the next bracket going, and then we'll di hit up BYU, which we presume will play, but we'll also look at Duquesne. I mean, yeah. will we be rooting for Duquesne? I mean, sure. like, we're also bound eventually to get one of those lucky draws, right? Like how, uh, or like, or we would have had to play Oregon State, right? Like if we would have beat Loyola, yeah. that, that would have been a very lucky draw. All lucky the games draw. have to play out, so we can look at all these individual like, matchups, but you don't know until you know. Who was it that had to play FDU last year after FDU beat Purdue? Like, we're, we're due to get one of those upsets on, in, in, in our little bracket, right? So we can play somebody easy to yeah, get to the right. Sweet 16. Okay, so in the South region, we got Houston as the one seed. Longwood. They will bounce back, I would believe, from their awful yeah. performance yesterday. Where and they got Longwood as the 16. Morehead, Else, oh, go sorry, ahead. Sorry, no, no, no. Moorhead State. Is that Kentucky? Hmm. Something? Yes, it is in Kentucky. Okay. Oh, Nebraska. Hey, wow. Nebraska. That's high. Don't get too excited, guys. That's All right, there they go. Yeah. <laughs> Your so, gift is you get to play Houston. But you know what? I'd, I'd want to watch that game. Yeah, that'd be exciting. Be interesting. The nine seed, though, can they get past Texas A&M? Oh, a &M? man. I don't like that. That's a tough draw. <laughs> yeah. But, you know, when you're on the eight line, you're right. You're it's going to be pretty team, even, Steven. Yeah. Let's look at Texas A&M compared to them. Um, well, A&M had a big week at the SEC tournament. They almost... Yeah, you know uh, what? That's going to be a heck of a game, man. A&M's yeah. 44, uh, Ken Palm versus Nebraska's 28th. Yeah. Hey, oh, Wisconsin wow. is the five. A deserved five, yeah. despite their late season swoon. Look at those losers. Come on, play a tough 12 seed. <laughs> yeah. Play a tough 12 seed. Thank God we beat them. 12 seed, we'll go two. Mm-hmm. Anytime. James. Oh, Ooh. wow. Can James Madison, who beat Michigan State at Michigan State earlier this year, get another Big Ten upset? What do you think? I don't know. Michigan State was playing really, really rough at that, at that time. And again, I mean, Dude, was, James Madison is not bad for a 12 seed. No. They're, they're 59 in Ken Palm. They were ranked for a chunk of the season. Yes. And they just won that's their That's a tough draw. They only lost three games. Wow. Oh, man. That's... that's that sucks for Wisconsin. I don't know. I mean, Duke has struggled, but Duke is yeah. much more talented. And Duke is the four seed. We'll play 13 seed. Is it going to be a sexy upset pick? Vermont. Eh, okay. Nah. nah. I'm interested, interested to see where Michigan State ends up. Yeah. Um, Nebraska got a, got a favorable seed because I know some people had them as a 10. Okay, so let's see the six seed in Pittsburgh. Okay. Texas I mean, Tech. take your pick, right? Could have been Texas Tech or you BYU. Just Texas Tech just beat BYU twice? Or they yes, beat them twice, twice this year? Yeah. yeah. So, you know, there are sometimes teams that the metrics love wow. them. Wow. Wow, NC State in the 11. Yeah. Isaac, there's sometimes teams that the metrics love them. Yeah. But they might not be as good as their metrics. Wisconsin never fell further than 25th, even when they played really crappy. Trevor said Michigan State's like top 20 in every metric. Mm -hmm. But they yeah. don't play like it. Right. Okay, so the three seed... 
We're going to see our comparables here. Man, that sucks for a bubble team that just missed out because of NC State. Oh, by the way, I missed it. Are we playing Thursday or Friday? Oh, geez. Thursday or Friday? Does it? Thursday? Thursday? Okay. Well, and we won't know the time until I guess later. I just, yeah. But. Oh, Kentucky gets the three. Oh, they got a three. Okay. okay. Uh, yeah, well, they've been red hot. Depending on the two seed, They're that playing might be Thursday. Thursday. We, Thursday in Omaha. Okay. Time undetermined. Just please don't be during the school day. Otherwise, we are not learning <laughs> anything. Sorry, kids. Florida, okay. All right, Oakland, the 14th seed. Now we got uh, Florida's a seven. I tell you what, thank God they're not a six. Yeah. They did lose their big man today, according to Alani Brick Girl. Yeah. In the chat thread. Yeah, bad injury. Oh, wow, okay. Boise State, Colorado is the tens. Boise, Colorado. Okay. All right, elsewhere. Would you prefer Thursday or Friday to play Thursday or Friday? So then you're playing on Saturday for the Sweet 16. Yeah, I hate waiting. I agree. I'd rather yeah, play Thursday. I hate waiting. Let's just get to it. Now, do I prefer it to be an evening game? Yes. Yeah. All right. Friday. Yeah. Can you get off work at the drop of a hat if you need to Thursday afternoon? Uh, yeah. Okay. I could be sick. That's for sure. Yeah. <laughs> Marquette. Okay. Would you rather have Marquette or Iowa State as your Iowa team? Iowa State, right? 100%. Yeah. That's what, like... It's it's easy to look at BYU and be like, oh, they're you know overseeded or underseeded or whatever. But when you look at the whole big picture, which is what you should be doing, mm -hmm. I, I like I like the Iowa State. And I mean, sh who knows? BYU could lose first round. Let's talk about Duquesne and see what kind of matchup they might present against. They were like, they were not not the favorite to win their conference tournament. They so they did. are 86 in Ken Palm. Yeah. We'll go against... Now, they have a really good defense, 28th okay. in the country. We'll see if that poses any problems to BYU. I mean, listen, first things first, Moorhead State. Yeah. Now, I believe that the times come out later this evening, yeah. maybe within the next They're, couple hours. I haven't seen anything yet. After all the games are... Man, there's some crusty people on Twitter right now. <laughs> <laughs> wow. <laughs> Hello. That's exciting. Never change Twitter. You yeah. cesspool, you. All right. So there, we got the South and the East figured out. Well, as I look at this right now, starting with the East, UConn, I feel like, has a fairly easy road. Yeah. yeah. And as the overall number one seed, I believe they probably deserve that. Oh, yeah. I mean, the bottom of the bracket's wide open. Yeah. It... Is BYU the easiest six seed? Uh, we'll see compared to others, but take them or Texas Tech? I don't know. It's and, hey, you know, I'll also say this. I don't mind avoiding the storyline game against Akron. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. You know, like, it would have been too cute. I don't really care about the John Gross thing anymore. No. But it would have been fodder for people to talk about. Yes. And, and then whatever. national people would have got caught on to it by Wednesday. Yeah, exactly. And then they would have been the hot pick. <clears throat> All right, we got a break here before we get to the Midwest and the West brackets. So, a quick reminder the 200 level brought to you by DP Doe online at dpdoe.com. For all the best deals and prices, dpdoe.com. State Farm agent Brian Hansen online at brianismyguy.com. Life, auto, home, business, renters, you name it, Brian is my guy, and he can be your guy as well at brianismyguy.com. We also have Owen Builders LLC online at owenbuildersllc.com for home additions, patios, and decks. Luke and his staff are the best in the business. Check out a gallery of their work at OwenBuildersLLC.com. And finally, got to thank Dogtown Heating, Air, and Plumbing, 217-841-4728. That's Dogtown Heating, Air, and Plumbing. Schedule your AC checkup before the weather gets too warm by giving them a call at 217-841-4728. Dogtown Heating, Air, and Plumbing, your home's best friend. Also got to thank Champagne Showers. We got some paper brackets here for the folks at Poor Brothers, and we also have an online bracket challenge that we'll tweet out. We'll get it out to everybody so you can join for free. I'm going to enter it myself. All right, so Isaac. Let's see. Hmm. Trying to get some inclinations on a time or a Moorhead State breakdown. Interesting. From Bobo, the Illinois bracket has three of the four final four teams from last year. Okay, so you have hmm. UConn. Um, this is from oh from oh, Bobo. FAU, duh. We were talking about Moorhead State, and you're right; they did compete against Indiana. Yeah. But. But Indiana was awful. They were bad. Point, yeah. 
They lost at Purdue by 30, and they lost at Penn State by 23. And they got whooped okay. by Alabama. Whooped by Alabama, who's got an offense similar yeah, to you. Right. Uh, you know, I'd be worried if they were exceptional in offense or defense, but they're firmly eh. They did Both beat, of them. They beat St. Mary of the Wood by seven, 69 Saint points. St. Mary of the Wood. <laughs> Glad well, we didn't draw them this year. Uh, not even ranked. <laughs> not even a real team, I don't think. That honestly is the closest I've ever heard to like Little Sisters of the Poor yeah, or like right, that like old the cliche they talk thing. about. Now, by comparison, because I was all but certain that Akron yes. was going to be the matchup. They're yes. 116 on Ken Palm, Moorhead's 111. This is the benefit of being a three seed. You right. avoid... Yes. Yes. I mean, shoot, look at this. Okay, four seed... Do, where's Vermont? Let's find out where Vermont, Vermont just won their conference. Eh. I don't know how great they are. They're 104, now. yeah. Uh, Yale, eh. They just won. You know they're going to be a smart basketball team, but maybe not very athletic. But, you know, Yale, they're 84th in Ken Palm. That's right, 20 jumps. That's, scarier, that's yeah. substantial. But I think the five seed, man, Wisconsin drawing James Madison. And I think the Duke, way Wisconsin's yeah. playing, I'll pick him. Yeah, that would be – I mean, Wisconsin would have beat most other teams today. They just happened to run into Terrence Shannon at the worst possible time. Yeah. Let me check out San Diego State. I'm intrigued by that. They're the five, the other they're, five? Oh, yeah, they're five seed. Wow. They're 21st in Ken Palm facing UAB. I tell you what, though, Auburn is going to be a really sexy pick yeah. to make it to the Final Four instead of UConn. We'll see. Now, anxious for the Midwest bracket to see what Purdue's draw is. Yeah. I don't know if we're going to do Midwest or West coming up here. And uh, hey, YouTube chat feed, while you're in there, if you guys can subscribe, if you haven't already, to our YouTube channel and just hit that thumbs up button. And if you're seeing anything on, oh, Jay Billis is hyping up Moorhead State. Hey, it's that time of year, guys. You're like, How far is Omaha? That's a good question. Uh, Omaha is quite the hike. What, like maybe eight hours? All right, here we go. We're going next to... Seven, not terrible. Seven? Seven, yeah. Hmm. The Midwest, Purdue, okay, number one seed. Let's go. see what their draw is. Purdue. And they get to play in Indianapolis, which is wow. deserved. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, they deserve it. Man, that's a home game, essentially. Montana State and Grambling State. Well, I don't foresee... Another, yeah. A repeat of last year. I mean, if you're Purdue... <laughs> but I'm intrigued. I'm always intrigued by the 8-9. Yeah, 100%. All right. Elsewhere in Indianapolis on Friday, the 8 seed is going to be... Okay. Utah State. Okay. I would have liked them instead of BYU, but that's okay. A lot of Utah teams. Yeah. Well, maybe just two, Mount, but Mount West gets two more than I thought there would be. And 9 will be, hmm, TCU. I don't know. I, yeah, I have no Death in the Big 12, maybe that's why they got what they got. I know they were um, a bubble team, too, though, so yeah. they, they're getting one of those. I mean, Purdue's got to make the Sweet 16. Yeah, yeah, they <laughs> you, have to. And they, I think they will. I think they will. Now, Gonzaga's the wow. five. That's a, that's a pretty weak five. I mean, that's. I mean, this feels like the first time Gonzaga's. Wow. Well, yeah. there's your there's that's your 12 gonna, pick. Yeah, that's going to be the sexy. There's pick. your sexy yeah. pick right there. McNeese State is the 12 seed. Will Wade, that crooked Will Wade. Yeah. Though in all honesty, he was just doing what all the coaches are doing he now. Got, he just got caught. He was just yeah. cheating before it was legal. <laughs> all right, so McNeese State will be the very popular pick to get a win. I'm so glad to have avoided a team like that. Oh my gosh. On yes. the four line, you have. Let's see here. Also in Salt Lake City, Kansas. Wow, okay. Now, Man. I'm intrigued. They're coming in beaten and bruised a little bit. Yeah. Sanford? Hmm. I know. You know anything about them, Isaac? Latulip was talking about them being pretty, pretty fun to watch. I don't know. Wow, it's clearly warmer 81 there. Ken Palm. They got a pretty good offense. Are they in Florida or something? Dad gum. I don't know. It's warm. <laughs> They're outside. Nice and warm. Um... Yeah, Kansas, that'll be very interesting to Sanford's see. Birmingham, Alabama. Yeah, so it is warmer. Well, I think McNeese, <laughs> McNeese is going to be a, a trendy pick to make the Sweet 16 right there. Purdue, you better make the Elite Eight. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, yeah. 
That's, that's not a lot of resistance right there. South Carolina, wow. that was the one I wanted. Yeah. But you know what? I mean, they also, didn't they, they beat, did they beat Tennessee not that long ago? I mean, they've, the SEC. Yeah, is that's a, true. The SEC is a better league. It's than, a better no, league. No, but wait, is BYU in the Big 12 or Mountain they West? They are. They're in the Big they 12 They are in the Big 12 now, now. Yeah. Oregon. Yeah, like that's South another, Carolina. Another uh, bid stealer won yeah. last night. Creighton, Creighton gets wow, the three. Okay. So you are comparable to Creighton, who's really good. Yeah. And was Kentucky. Other, Kentucky, okay. Wow. That's a pretty good year, Isaac. I mean, we added how many of our quad one wins like the last two weeks? Uh, four. Four of them, yeah. Because we only had like three before. Yeah. All right, they're going to play Akron. Okay, there ah. you go. There you go. John Gross. Go get him, John. Yeah. They're going to lose by 20. <laughs> I mean, they, they shouldn't even be in it. Yeah, they should have lost. I mean, they should have okay. lost last night. Texas, wow. Okay, Texas is the seven. That's, <laughs> I thought they were like right on the bubble. I they did got, too. So Virginia, wow, Colorado okay. State. And Charlotte. CSU. Okay, so Thursday, the two seed in the Midwest. Is let's see. Why is Tennessee and Charlotte? Stop talking, Seth Davis. Let's move along here. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Tennessee. Tennessee. Okay. That I think is a good draw for them. Texas yeah. or Virginia? Oh my gosh! Yeah. Also, these teams that bow out in really spectacular fashion in the conference tournaments. They seem to regroup. It feels like get like the that. stinker out of the way, you know. I know Virginia when they won it a few years ago did that. St. Peter's. Okay. Hey, weren't they a team a few years ago that made a run? They they beat they Kentucky. beat Kentucky and yeah. then they beat and then their they coach beat Purdue. Yeah, that's right. In the and Sweet then, Sixteen. And then they lost North Carolina. Who their coach won it is all. now at Seton Hall. Correct. Right. Yep. All right. So there is your bracket. Purdue. Uh, I mean, come they, on, yeah. guys. You got the draw. Purdue, Tennessee will be an easy pick. Yeah. I, it just seems to me like this is the weakest bracket so far. 100% so far. But, you know, the good news is this, Isaac. I don't look at ours and say, boy, do we get screwed. No, no. But, again, like, even if, <clears throat> unless somehow Kansas or something dropped to a six seed, you just, at, at some point, you have to get over it and just play who's in front of you. Oh, this is from Bobo, though. Five of the top 16 teams on Ken Palm are in the East region. Now, in fairness, Bobo, in fairness, you're going to have three or four in each region other right, than that. Yeah, so, right. like, you got one more. I, that, that, would I prefer to be in the region that has only three of those top 16? Sure. Yeah, there should be, a, there should be roughly four in each, right? Yeah, yeah, but the good news is that UConn, UConn and Auburn are on the other side. <laughs> yeah, if either of yeah. those were on your side, right. I would be much more concerned. I mean, that's like, if you're playing for a Final Four, that's who you're going to have to beat. Yeah. You're going to have to beat yeah. a UConn or something. All right, from Brad, can't look ahead to BYU, you have to beat Moorhead State. Yeah, listen, Brad, I'm, I won't take anything for granted. Yeah, no. Uh, I think that as we have a week or a few days at least to digest this, I also, one thing I like, Isaac, I prefer the Thursday to the Friday with a shorter turnaround. Yep. You're healthy. Yep. Okay. You don't need the extra rest. I think any extra time that you have off, you get the potential for rust. Just get out there and play again. Okay. So I know you played Drexler on a Friday, right? I want to say. That was on early Friday morning. Yep. Yeah. And then I know last year was Friday, right? Mm. I can't remember. The Houston loss was a Sunday. No, it was, it was a Friday, I think, against yeah. Arkansas. I feel like the early last... afternoon, and then I mean that game just sucks. So I yeah, but th th that team by that point was so unlikable. Right. That's so, like let's just just I like the Thursday game. Every, anything different than than Thursday. This is from Mike. I think this is really the story right here. Let's be honest. We're on our we are our own worst enemy. If our guys come out focused, I feel really good about the ability to make a run. We're a legit team this year. We just need to play like it. Mike, that's why, and Isaac, what your response too. Yeah. And that's why I think today was so encouraging because I think it was the closest we've seen to a 40 minute complete performance. Yeah, right, right. Some defensive lapses, you could argue, early in the second half. But um, overall, I, I just feel like that was Wisconsin on one. Yeah. You weathered the storm. And more impressively, you immediately battled back and turned that 10 point deficit to a, 
a three-point deficit in a matter of a minute. I think that that's something we've talked about during this season, but the, your ability to punch back has been so so much better this year. Yep. Um, it feels like a lot of games you've, you've gone down big. And then even, even like the Tennessee game very early on, I think you went down like 12 and you ended up losing by single digits. Yep. So just the fact that you don't, that everything doesn't, go to crap when you go down seven or eight points has been has been awesome this year i mean you literally just you won the big 10 tournament and you were down double digits in all three games yep that's crazy this is from greg illinois played from behind and battled all three games i don't mind that going in the tournament i hope they don't get in the mindset that it's yeah, okay that to go behind it, right. uh i i also just think though as i look at these matchups um yeah i you aren't a one seed so your three versus six was not going to be a gimme no. now would i take here are your other options, right? Six seed Texas Tech. They're 24th, Ken Palm. And they beat, uh, they beat BYU by double digits twice. So that's metrics not agreeing with the results. We also have six seeded South Carolina. That was the one I wanted because the metrics don't like them. But then they're in a, a tough league as well in the SEC with a gaudy 26 right. and 7 record. So. You know, it's listen. It's pick your poison. Um. So who's our? So who's our? Eight, is Northwestern in ours? Northwestern is the eighth in ours against in no, the nine against eight seed FAU. So Brad Evans. But did you already say this? He thinks we kind of got. Does he think we get screwed? He got thinks screwed? we got a little screwed just because us UConn Iowa State all won the conference tournament. UConn Final Four yeah. last year. Yeah. Iowa State's playing hot. FAU went to the Final Four last year. Here's the thing, um, though. Like. The games have to play themselves. Breaks right. can occur. Yeah. We and could dude, just get lucky. <laughs> if we're on one, right. we could beat anybody. I mean, this is how I felt in 2021, right? Yeah. Like you, you can beat any. And you should have. You should have still beat Loyola. It's not like, like the fact of the matter is you would have had to play Oregon State, right? Right. So then you would have gotten a break. Like you just had to get over the hump. Listen, uh, we, we, I agree with Mike in that regard. We're our own worst enemy or we are our own best friend. Yeah. It's really up to this team to decide. So North Carolina does get okay. the final one seed. That makes sense after Iowa State. Still no Michigan State yet. No Michigan State yet. So I don't have, have to be the bearer of bad news for my wife if they don't get in there. So we have... I don't believe she's watching this right now. Michigan... Or, we have four big teams, right? Big Ten teams right now? Mm, five. Four. Illinois, Wisconsin, Northwestern, Nebraska. Purdue. Purdue. So five. Okay. So we are waiting on the six. Man. How are, I'm trying to write down the 16 seed. Who cares? There's no way they leave out Michigan State. Mississippi State at wow, eight. Okay. Oh, boy. Michigan State? Listen, they're going to be in. They, they have to be. Yeah. They at least Nine they play C, a game. There oh, you there go. Goes, yeah. Well, that's... Uh, hmm. Mississippi State. They, they just lost. They're 30th in Ken Palm. You got Michigan State at 18. I forget who they lost to in the SEC tournament. I mean, here's the thing, Isaac. Come on. BYU 16, Michigan State 18. I love Ken Palm because it yeah. law of averages, yeah. it should even out. St. Mary's gets in as a five seed. That'd be the most Tom Izzo thing, though, to yeah. upset North Carolina. Okay. They're going to be fa- – oh, they're out, in, out west. That's a good break for them. Yeah, holy cow. Jeez. Grand, Grand Canyon. Canyon. Okay. Okay. I could see that as a possible upset. I don't really trust the St. Mary's or the Gonzagas of the world. I know Gonzaga, I mean, they literally made a national title game two years ago. Yeah, right. I don't trust them. <laughs> All right, Friday in Spokane, the four seed is going to be... Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Alabama. That's a pretty good four seed that can really light yeah. it up. And I tell you what, man... Them having to go out west to play, I mean, they should beat St. Mary's because they're just better than them. Yeah. But it's not, yeah. It I, like that we don't, I like that we don't have to travel that far. Right. I mean, Omaha, that's a quick little plane ride. Clemson. Would have been glad, nice to be in Memphis. I'm, I'm glad we avoided Clemson, though. Yeah, Clemson's tough. I just saw somebody say that like five of the top, or did you, maybe you said that, but somebody said five or six of the top 16 Ken Palmer in our. Yeah, five. Whatever. But I mean, that means the average would be four. Right, if so they if they just did a straight Ken Palm, there'd can't be four be in each. That, right? New Mexico gets the eleven against okay. Clemson. All right, 
I'm really just going to wait and see what Trevor says. If it's Man, a, it would have been cool if they were back. Memphis yeah. on Friday. Yeah. We're taking the day off. and Oh, Baylor, okay. Uh, yeah. Baylor, fine. So six Big Ten teams. Okay, they got Colgate. It would have been nice to play Colgate again. Yeah. Just so would you have taken Clemson or BYU as your potential second-round matchup? I think it's, again, pick your poison. Yeah, from... Oh, Dayton, okay. Dayton as the seven. That's a tough seven. I don't know a tough, a ton about Clemson, but from what Derek and Jeremy have said, they, have, they would have good matchups for us, like to stretch out Coleman and, mm-hmm. and guard Marcus. All right, Nevada. Oh, See, wow, they're a 10 seed. Wow. They were, yeah. So yesterday on, on some of the bracket yeah. boards, this was a team that was looking at a six, yeah. and it was like, I would love to play Nevada. Well, they got a 10. Holy cow. So that's what the committee thinks about them. Wow. Stinks for Dayton. But they get to stay out west, so Dayton has to go play <laughs> yeah. Nevada and Salt Lake City. Man, that stinks for Arizona, too. Yeah, Arizona. Listen, man, they I'm sorry. We didn't get far. screwed. I don't think. No, no. I've seen far worse screw jobs from the selection committee, and this is not one of them. All right, Arizona, the two seed. They lost once as a two seed to oh, Steve wow. Nash. Okay, so Long Beach State, they fired their coach earlier this week, and then he won the, their conference tournament. Yeah. All right. Wow. Whew. So so who are the 14s? Who are the other 14 seeds? The 14 seeds, you're looking at Oakland. We already played them. Close. Colgate. Close, though. Yeah, Colgate. You, you already like. played them. Yep. 14 seed, Akron. How did they not give us Akron? I'm f- I, of the four. I'm flabbergasted. I, I will I, say of the four teams, I'm fine with that. And then you, yes, you get Moorhead State that right. already has struggled against two Big Ten teams worth of crap, and they yeah. barely lost to Indiana. But Mike Woodson was probably too busy <laughs> tooting his own horn to really care. That was early in the season. And then who are the other six seeds besides The BYU? other six seeds, so you are, okay, the one you would face is BYU, but yep. you could have faced Texas Tech, okay. South Carolina, okay. or Clemson. I don't know. You could do worse. Mm. Come on. Yeah. This is, you do what you got to do, you're making the Sweet 16. Right. And if you don't, you don't. And that's, we've seen that plenty with the Monty basketball. I mean, you before. should, yeah, you should beat all four of those teams. If yes. you line up against them, like... And then, what's your gift? Well, the number one defense in the country, probably in Iowa State, uh, who I think will get out of yeah. their pod with Washington State, Drake. Yeah. Yeah. But wouldn't that be interesting, a Drake-Iowa State matchup? Yeah. So that's Ames to Des Moines. Not a very far drive there no. between those two teams. And they're, they're both in, well, I don't know if they're, they're, they are in Omaha. This whole side of the bracket is in Omaha. Oh, wow. So they would have a pretty good turnout between their fans. Yeah, South Dakota State. Maybe some of their fans will trickle down there, too. I like that we'll have a little bit of a presence there. Yes. I like that they'll probably just go there tomorrow. I don't know, tomorrow? Like, some people, or yeah. Do I class they, online. They probably man, go already. on Tuesday. Okay, All right, so. We got six, okay. Conferences with multiple bids. Eight for the Big 12, eight for the SEC, six for the Big 10, six for the Mountain West. Five ACC, four Pac-12. Last four in, oh, here we go, okay. Last four in, Boise State, Colorado, Virginia, and Colorado State. The first four out, wow. Oklahoma, Seton Hall, Indiana State, ouch, and Pittsburgh. That bubble shrunk, and I feel a little bad for Indiana State, but yeah, you, they, can't, you can't go down 20 in your conference title no, game. No, I mean, at least two of those teams would have got hurt. If Oregon would have lost last night, and if... NC State would have lost. Two of those teams would have got in. Well, chat thread and YouTube, That's let crazy. us know what you think. I mean, I, I don't I'm know. just even even if we did get a bad matchup, it's been too long talking about Loyola and talking about Houston. Like <laughs> at this point, we can't talk about that all week. Like no, we just got to line up and you got to line up man, and play who's in make, front of you and eventually make your own luck. Right, exactly. Like be the better team. Yes, be the better team. And the the encouraging or the exciting thing is that this team can be the better team. Yes. We've seen it. This team can also play the first half like they did against Nebraska and then get rushed off the court at least for a little bit from BYU, back, yeah. but then on the on the flip side, you saw them come back from double digit deficits in each second half. And this is undoubtedly the most consistent team 
of the even like of the like we I think we talked about this yesterday. Even the 2021 team, they started, offensively. Yes, but they also they started off the year pretty poor. You haven't lost back to back games all year. This that's right. This Illinois team is yet to lose back to back games. It makes me wish the NCAA tournament were double elimination. And I mean, when's, sadly, it's not. That'd be great if it was. When's the last time we played back to back bad halves? Mm. Like it would probably be. One of the games the, without Terrence hey, or the closest thing I thought was the second half of Ohio State and the first half of Nebraska. Yeah, I'm and, just and, saying where you played 40 bad minutes and like I, I should 40 bad minutes. You're right because the last 10 minutes of Ohio State you stepped up. Right. I would but honestly, today, yeah. dude. Today, I mean, we, we I like that we had a break between winning the tr- tournament title. Yeah. We got to soak in that for 20 minutes as opposed to last time when that game went overtime against Ohio State and it ended and they immediately went to the selection show. Yep. So we got to bask in the glow for a little bit. Let's revisit that. Why today was so encouraging. I thought it was 40 pretty good minutes of basketball. Right. And and the fact that I know Wisconsin scored 87, but when you're playing at the pace that Illinois plays at, it really comes down to the points per possession. Yep. And... Even in that, that second half when Wisconsin went up 10, it felt 50% like, okay, you need to probably – you can't go under on screens, right, Marcus? Like, you can't go under on Chucky and Klesmit and everything. And then it felt like 50% of that was just them hitting big shots. I mean, you should have probably won by 10 if Klesmit doesn't hit those, you know, crazy threes at the end of the game. Yeah. Um, so it, it felt – it didn't feel as much today like a bunch of defensive breakdowns or guys just being lazy. It felt – it felt a good amount like Wisconsin was really hitting some shots. From Jacob, make plays and win. Yep, and they yeah. finally looked loose the last three halves. Jacob, that was encouraging to me. Yes. This team today showed up ready. They showed up loose. I thought you were trailing by two, three, four points in the first half, mostly because Wisconsin was making big plays. You weren't playing poorly. Yep. Uh, this is from Brad Underwood, according to Bobo on the Sweet 16 drought. It's not about checking the box. I came here to win a national championship. Well, I, hey, I love it. <laughs> first things now, first, make the I second mean, weekend. At the end of the day, Underwood's not, he's only been here for, what, seven years or whatever. He's not, he wasn't a part of the teams like that haven't made the Sweet 16 before he got here. So, But now he, he did have that same problem when he was at Stephen F. Austin. Yeah, like, exactly. Not making the Sweet 16. And, so he does fairness, have... When you're Stephen F. Austin. Yeah, you're not expected to go that. They they played well. When he was at Oklahoma State, they had one of the best NCAA tournament games I'd ever seen, losing to Michigan, I think, right? Yes, and then Michigan went on. Was that one of the final or national championship years? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And this one more here from uh, from Jacob as well. The team doesn't depend on jump shots like the previous teams with Trent, Io, and Plummer. Yes. Sans Kofi. And that's true. The lack of depending on jump shots, I think, is a plus for this team. They can create an easy shot. And you got at least two guys that can do it. And if your supporting cast is playing well, then you're in great shape. I mean, even Ty, right? Like, Ty can go get his own bucket. Like, we have so many guys that can go score, which we don't have to just rely on two guys. Yep. All right, we're going to do a rapid-fire segment with a special guest. This is my niece, Alexis, who's sporting her Luke Goody jersey. Nice. And Luke had a monster Big Ten tournament. Um, Okay, Alexis, I got three quick questions for you, okay? Number one, it's not a question, but it's a a challenge. Say something nice about Zach Eadie. She's stumped. <laughs> She's still stumped. Okay, well, I, had, I sat next to her at the Purdue game, and I, I, it reminded me a lot of younger me. Actually, it reminded me today <laughs> when I was watching Max Klesmet, and I wanted to just punch his face. And yeah. I thought, I'm 37. I should be more mature than that. Okay, easier question. Illinois makes the Sweet 16 if? If they can beat the other teams? And what is the key to doing that? Playing as good as they did today. I would agree with that. Do you think that uh, if you had to grade today's performance, Alexis, against Wisconsin, what would you grade it for Illinois? Well, they were kind of um, like not doing the best like at the like beginning of like the second half, but then they turned it around and they did really good. They did. I agree. Alexis, uh, do you think we're going to be playing in the Sweet 16? Are we going to be playing next weekend? Yes. She nods. She says, yes, book it. Alexis, thank you for joining us on the tuner level. All right, so we have, man, we won a banner today, man. I know. I almost forget about it. <laughs> Boy, it's, it's such a whirlwind. Yeah. And then you just sort of. And they, they yeah. did just show, they just showed that um, overall seed 
by like the tournament committee, mm-hmm. you had the highest total, which means that you technically by overall seed have the weakest region of the other ones. Like, so you had a third, your, your total seed line in your region was 36. Hmm. Okay. By top, top four seeds, I believe. So yeah, um, I, I think we, I think we're in okay shape. There's going to be a region with tougher. Yeah. Right. Like, I'm but just, listen, how, how many times do we need to watch this to know this never goes scratch? Right. It right. never goes no, scratch. Uh, so, all right. It is 5, what, 45. They're talking to the, uh, I think, the head of the selection committee. Listen, I've, there have been many selection Sundays where it ends, and I'm yep. like, oh, God. Yep. The Houston one was an obvious example. I didn't feel like we were going to beat Arkansas last year. When no. Loyola's name came across three years ago, I thought, you've got to be kidding me. i got to watch Sister Jean get trotted out and everybody's favorite little underdogs that could be the f- Illinois, the in-state. I, I just hated it from the start. We have no connection with any of these teams. I like that. Yeah, right. As far as we know. Yeah, um, and... you. Listen, you got Terrence Shannon Jr. Right, he's playing better. He's <laughs> I mean, playing like the best player in the country right now. So, we we sit here and talk about a Sweet Sixteen, dude. If he plays like that, yeah. Good I mean, luck, Iowa State. You know, like I, I listen. You got to play the games, but I like what they did today. It makes yes. me much more encouraged than previous seasons going into it. Yes. <clears throat> and I would actually even include maybe twenty twenty one. You feel better going into the tournament right now? Uh, like, because, I, well, I, I'll say this. I didn't have the gut reaction when, when BYU's name came across. Yeah. I didn't have that gut reaction no. like I did when Loyola's name came no. across. No, yeah, that, that was because they were so, so underseeded. And, again, I think it comes back to the consistency thing and the amount of veterans you have. That, like, the fact that Quincy is, like, your fourth or fifth guy and he's been, he's been in college for so long, right? Yeah. Like, that, that has definitely helped you because there's been a lot of games where th- this season where I think underclassmen would have fallen apart. Um, and then I think, the, again, the fact that even if Terrence is having a really bad game, the fact that Marcus could go score 30 and yep. save your butt, um, I think that's, that's huge. All right. Uh, one more thing before we close out, Isaac, because I know you got a podcast to go cover oh, with yeah, the Alain Choir guys. So it, this is from Jacob. Illinois is the last three seed. Okay, that makes sense, which means you're playing the best six seed which in the committee's mind is BYU. Now that means, I, I want to look at the five seeds here and ask you, would you trade any of those five seeds for BYU? Okay. Now obviously Wisconsin would not be one. Okay? No. But San Diego State, Gonzaga, St. Mary's. I mean, I think I'd rather play BYU. I, between yeah. Gonzaga and St. Mary's, they don't scare me like years past, but no matter no. what, you're playing a team from the West. Yeah. Different style of play. You know, what the heck? All right, going to a couple more here before we get out of here. A tweet from Sky Clark. Wow, big time congrats to the Illini men's basketball and coach Underwood on winning the Big Ten title. Interesting. They cut down the Nets next month. Well, thanks, Sky. Uh, appreciate that. That's from Bobo. From Brad, Illinois has a couple of guys that can draw fouls that can put teams in trouble. And, yeah, I think, Brad, the way it's officiated will be a big X factor, but that yeah. would go for most games. For Illinois, though, that can be something they can use to their advantage. All right, yeah. Isaac, we got a banner, a baby. I know. That'll be awesome next year regardless. And I think in my mind, I'm trying to think if Illinois has been a three seed before. In my life, we are always on the top side of the bracket. We get the occasional one seed. We often get a four or a five. Yeah. A three, I've always wanted the two or the three. So we got it, and maybe that's going to finally open the lane up a little bit for them. The year that they lost, to, was it Western Kentucky? Yes. They were a four seed? Four seed. Okay, yeah. So yes. Uncharted Chester was Taylor. out, but they still should have won that game. That, that's the Bruce Weber era. Hey, yeah. one more thing, too. Listen, there were times in this weekend where it didn't look good. You can go back and listen to the Nebraska podcast to hear <laughs> our existential dread. And you know what? That could show up again in a tournament game. It yeah. could. Yeah. But I got to give props to Brad Underwood. Oh, yeah. You know, I've lived in the lean years from late Weber through John Gross and the first two years of Brad Underwood. Dude, we are in a, a place now as a program where, yes, this feels amazing, but it doesn't feel unexpected. No, it's the bar. The bar is so much higher. We, we got a pretty healthy program. So thank you, Brad Underwood. Yes. If, if you listen, all you can ask for as a fan is moments. Right. And in his tenure, we've had a lot of moments. We do have one big old matzo ball out there to get. 
So let's go get it. Let's make a run in the NCAA tournament, and you got a team capable of doing it. All right, wait, for Poor Brothers, we appreciate them hosting us today. Yes. It was a lot of fun coming in here and watching the game, and uh, what a game it was. On St. Patrick's Day, no less, a place that has all the kind of beers you can want. So thanks to Jason and the guys of Poor Brothers. Great for um, drinks, great for live music every weekend. My band will play here again this summer. Um, also thanks to DP Doe, State Farm agent Brian Hansen, Dogtown Heating, Air, and Plumbing, and Owen Builders, LLC. Thanks to Champagne Showers for the bracket contest. We will tweet out that link so you can join it online. And Isaac, thank you, sir. Oh, my gosh. So it's been a we'll, blast. we'll be back in the garage. Thursday. Thursday. Yeah. I really hope it's not an early game. Uh, I think Omaha, because there's all of these games. Boy, I could really see. I feel like there's always an upset, like early Thursday morning, and like a lot of people are still at work and stuff. So yeah. it's like it kind of goes brushed off. So. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, well, we'll know later tonight. Yeah. I, I would imagine that Iowa State will get the night game. So I think that either you or the BYU game might get an earlier start. Hopefully you don't get the earliest. Okay, so quick quick update from Trevor. He said he likes the matchup. Iowa State's a worthy opponent. But if you're good enough, you're going to face good teams, like we've been saying. So he thinks it could have been worse. It, it's been much worse. And, I mean, yeah. at you didn't point, get screwed. We'll take it. No, I don't think so. Either. We've got screwed before, so yes. not today. Right. And you are Big Ten Tournament champs. What a day, Illini fans. Yes. All right, hey, for the YouTube folks joining us, uh, subscribe on the way out if you haven't already and just hit that like button. We appreciate it. Uh, for those listening in the audio portion, I will get one out there maybe Tuesday ahead of the Thursday first game, and we'll know the time tonight. So we'll try, as long as I'm not in school, to know um, – to know uh, – if we're going to be able to do a garage pod on Thursday. I really yeah. hope so. Definitely Saturday. Um, but thank you all for tuning in, for watching wherever you may be across the country. A lot of Illini fans all over the place. We appreciate it. Isaac, thanks again, bud. Of course. Go celebrate. Let's do it. Say hi to Derek and Jeremy. That's what I'm going to be listening to next. Yes, and sir. we will see you soon. It is the 200 level. Adios. I like a good pencil. Ah, yes. Wow. Man. That was a blur. Holy cow. Yeah, I know, dude. Amazing. All right, same project. I'm just not. Like, I just wish it was Thursday. I know, I know. Honestly, I wish it was next Sunday so I could know. I can't